Jim McGregor here from Curious Research, and we're at NVIDIA's GTC conference, all about AI. And the funny thing is, is despite all the announcements about the new uh, Blackwell pro, uh, GPU and everything else today, um, you can't do any of this without the memory. And we're here with Micron and Goresh from Micron. And not only are they showing off the uh, kind of one of the stars of the show today, the HBM3E uh, memory that's being used in a lot of the products from the H100 to the H200 to the B200, but also they made their own their own announcement today. So Goresh, why don't you tell us about your announcement today? Yeah. So uh, today um, we basically have started shipping the engineering samples for the 12 high stack on the HBM3. Uh, the way to think about it is back in July, we announced that we'll have the engineering samples for 8 high, the 24 gigabyte solution. That's now what you see inside the H200 system that NVIDIA is currently planning to go into mass production in CQ2. Um, and back then we said that we will be shipping our 12 high samples in CQ1, uh, keeping our promise and delivery. We not only announced our HBM3 going into uh, mass production starting February, today we also are shipping HBM3 E12 samples to our customers who are looking to grow the capacity per placement of the memory, basically to solve the larger and larger AI models that come out today. And it's very significant. In fact, just going to the H, uh, going to the uh, eight high stack, um, you're seeing performance increases of like you know, or, or reducing the time by fifty percent, right? That's right. So if you look at some of the um, uh, between H100 and H200, the memory capacity went up from sixteen gigabyte to a twenty-four gigabyte, and as you go from the speeds that were announced on the uh, Hopper H100 to what the H200 would be, slight increase in performance, you're seeing up to about 60% improvement in inference uh, wow. uh, metrics based off of NVIDIA's models. Our own models say that we are capable of achieving about 50% in terms of inference. And there's also a reduction in the training time because with each placement or at, uh, the memory footprint growing yeah. at each node, basically you're able to do more with less. So it does help you solve bigger problems with a lower number of posts, as if you can think about it from that perspective. So what do we? What should we expect out of the 12 high stack? Uh, so clearly both on the training and inference side. So this is uh, an interesting landscape, right? When, uh, if you look at the uh, era of AlexNets and the older recommendation systems, yeah. Uh, inference was more bandwidth hungry, less capacity hungry. But with large language models, what they're trying to do is they're trying to batch multiple users to use the same trained model. Yeah. So now all of a sudden memory capacity is also just as important as the memory bandwidth, which interestingly is a very interesting phase where both capacity and bandwidth are like the new requirements moving into the new era of AI. It's just and like the traditional cloud or data enterprise server. The more people you add, the more more uh, capacity and bandwidth that you have to have. Except that the number of users going up in terms of all of these large language models. Yeah, it's just a small problem. It's just, you know, I was looking at this interesting plot a couple of days ago where the time to a million users uh, was a plot that somebody had and was mostly either in years at oh, yeah. best probably multi-years, decades, but with ChatGPT, two months. Two months. Two months. Exactly, two months. I mean, that's the number of people waiting for something like this. And there's an exponential growth in AI, right, with the new Sora, which basically translates yes. text to video. video. And you look at the video that it creates, it's unbelievable. It's almost, you can't discern between what's true and what's almost created by the, the artificial intelligence large language models. It's just phenomenal. Our own forecasts really show that video is kind of that inflection point for generative AI, just like it was, I think, for the mobile segment and you yes. know driving data consumption. Yes. Video is going to do that same stuff. Yeah. Now I want to I want to highlight this, and I want you to get a picture of this because this is really an engineering marvel when you think about it. I mean, there's eight stacked, um, basically uh, memory modules on there, and now they're going to twelve in the same height. And with the same, is the power consumption changing? Slightly. Slightly. Very, it's not that very much. Very small. 
but you're still managing all that heat, all that power in the same space, going even even increasing the memory performance and everything else, going from eight high to twelve high. So that is an engineering marvel to it be is. able to do that. It is, and it's it's not just about the capacity going up. Yeah. It's also how do you manage the power such that all these 12 stacks are still getting the same kind of power delivery because all the power is still coming from the bottom and all the heat is also being generated from the bottom. How do you dissipate that at the topmost level? Now you have 12 layers above that base die to dissipate the heat. So it's, it's truly an engineering marvel from multiple fronts because not always do you see in the memory industry where you get a capacity bump, a performance bump, and a power reduction all in one piece. Usually one trades off the other. So the fact that there's so much focus on power in the data center, and you alluded to this, going from eight high to 12 high, if you are already 30% better than anybody else on power, when you go to 12 high, yeah. the heat generated is so much lower. And when you have already built your thermal solution to be best in class, it really changes the game for anybody trying to build additional capacity push the performance to the maximum limit and still get all the benefits that you can from the system. So, I mean, memory really has led the way in terms of innovation for these through silicon vias, which are basically kind of what we see as copper bumps here. They go all the way through all these stacks, all the way down to the motherboard. So, you know, one of the things I'm wondering, though, is, you know, obviously we, we need more and more memory for these larger language models. What's this due to Micron's capacity requirements to support all this? I mean, are you looking at 2x, 3x? I mean, I got to think that you're going to have to not only scale your solution, but you have to scale your capacity to support right, this. Right. I think it's, it's very clear that the industry as a whole, right, when you look at the trade-off between a DDR versus a HPM, yeah. right, the number of wafers that you put in is also going to be changing. So clearly there is a need for this AI growth and we intend to be playing in this space with our own relevant share of market. So we absolutely will be looking at what it takes for us to be uh, a reasonable player in this market, meeting the requirements that the industry needs. Well, and you've already announced fab expansions in Japan and now one going to New York. And, you know, hopefully we don't know yet, but obviously hopefully there's investment there from the U.S. Chips Act. So that'll be interesting to watch as well, because yes. obviously AI is important to them. And you're the only U.S. memory vendor, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're proud about that. Yes, yes. very proud that's about a good that. thing. So, Gresh, thank you very much. Thank I you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.